Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I want to go over four of the best choices I think you can make in an oscilloscope under 500 bucks. All right, some are well under 500 bucks. Now these are full featured, full functioning, you know, scopes. I mean, we're talking four channel deep memory scopes. All right, these aren't the kind of scopes that you know think you know if it's your first scope and you're gonna get your feet wet, the eventually I'll upgrade. No, these are scopes I think with some of your bench you'll be happy with, all right? Uh, not entry level scopes, these are full featured scopes. Now, the one thing if you're not quite sure, I put out a video just today I think, I'm trying to put out both of these, um, and it goes over like, you know, the features that you might wanna look for in a scope if you're not sure, okay? Go into detail there, a lot of detail. <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to go over some pictures, show you what they look like, and then I'm going to um, go over the price, the prices, and the, the main specs, and a scorecard I put together to kind of figure out of the four. I think they're all four winners, but you know I had to kind of list them right. You got to have number one. <laughs> so all right, hey. So by the way, um, as far as what they look like. There will, be, there will be a signal on the list and it'll look very similar to this scope. It'll be four channel instead of two. So there'll be four channels across here. They'll move this calibration thing over here. So I'll show you a picture side by side of this. You'll see a close up of that. But basically, it looks very similar to this. Another one will be a GW Instec. Bigger, larger format, but it gives you four independent controls, all right? And it'll look just like this. This is the MDO, it's a mixed domain scope. Has a spectrum analyzer built in. Really super cool scope, but it's closer to two grand, okay? The one I'm gonna show you today will look just like this, except it's a GDS instead of an MDO. Otherwise, they look very similar. Now, here, let me just push this back so you can kinda of see the size difference. So, it is a bigger scope than this, but there's a lot of benefits, okay? So let's jump in the video and go over this and let me know if you like this and if it helped you buy a scope, all right? Thanks guys. All right guys, this is my Signet two channel 200 meg. That's not one of the ones we're talking about. I just have that here to show you the same size. I mean, what this Signet here. This was, this is the one that I'm uh, showing is one of the top four. It's a four channel. Uh, that's why this one's not in the running. Uh, this one's an 1104 XE. The picture shows 1204 XE, but uh, it would look identical. So what you can see here is in the, instead of independent controls for each channel, you see the four channels across. See the four channels across here on my iPad. Um, there's four color buttons here. So you select which channel, then you control it with this. Okay. So now one of the other scopes that are on the list is the GW Instec GDS 1104E. And it would look just like this scope, except this is the MDO, but it would look just like this. And it would have separate controls for each channel. So it's a larger scope, you can see, larger scope than Siglet, but it gives you the independent controls. One of the other things about the GW Instec is that you get one gig of sample for every channel where on this one you get one gig of sample divided by these two and then another gig of sample divided by these two. On the GW Instec you get 10 mega uh, points for deep memory for each one and over here you get 14 mega points for two here and 14 mega points for two here. So if you're using all four you get seven on each one and here you get 10 meg on each one so that's kind of a, the difference between these two. Now the Signet is a 100 megahertz bandwidth, where the GW Instec I'm showing is a 50 megahertz. One more thing I want to point out is you see on the Signet how it has this bar here, this menu bar and this space here on the side of the screen. You can't get that back, it's just there, okay? Just shows you menus. On the GW Instec, when you push this, it comes up with the same menu as you get here, but it goes away when you push this. 
So when it comes up and you select this, it comes up with another menu and you select what you want and then when you're done, you can get rid of those menus. You get your screen back. Okay, one thing I want to explain is these two scopes here have 8 inch screens. The Sigma here, the X-E, has 7 inch. The GW50 Meg that I'm talking about, the GDS, it looks just like this, but it's also a 7 inch. But the difference between how the GW and the Sigma work, you know, because of how you can turn off the menu, Sigma is only really using 7 inches of their screen because they're using this part of the for menus and for this information here. So really a GW Instex 7 inch will be practically as big as a Sigma 8 inch. So that's an advantage when we go look at um, when we compare them on the, on the book over here. Okay so this is a picture of the GDS with the 7 inch versus 8 inch. You can kind of tell by the bezel that it comes down a little bit more than this one does. This one's a little bit more opened up. So you can see the screen's a little bit smaller in this guy. But like I say, when you get rid of the menus, it's practically the same size as the Siglin 8 inch as far as usable, you know, usable area for your waveforms. Okay, and one of the other of the four scopes is going to be the Rigo DS1054Z or Z. Now this is picture the 1104Z, but there's the same thing. So you can see what I'm talking about, how the screen, the, there's menus on both sides that are kind of used up that you can't get rid of. So the screen's actually kind of smaller. So the GW Insect will, will look like it has a bigger screen. And sorry about the fuzzy picture, that's as good a picture as I could find. But you can see how it's like the Siglet, it has a... Uh, the buttons here and the separate controls. Other than the buttons along the side versus the buttons along the bottom, um, it looks very similar to the Siglent. And then the last of the four scopes on my list is the 01 XDS 3064E. 3064E. What you can see here is the four channels and the buttons like the Siglent and the Rigel that you select and the single set of controls for those four buttons. So the layout of all these scopes except for the GW with the independent controls are all very similar. Now the one thing I want to point out on the O1 it might, you, it might look a little bigger on the screen because it is. It's an 8 inch screen. It's the same size as these. The other thing I want to point out on the O1 is you notice you don't lose any border on the sides like you do on the Siglent and the Rigol. And also this menu pops down when you turn it off like it does on the on the GW. So the GW Instec and the O1 both reserve most of the screen for just information, not menus. The one thing about the O1 is the the buttons or the controls on the front might not look as refined as the other scopes. Uh, I think they're newer on the market and the, the thing I can say is, is a touch screen if you're interested in that. Uh, it just doesn't have quite the refined look as the other scopes. Okay guys, now one thing I want to just demonstrate is FFT, the importance of deep memory on FFT. Uh, here's the RIGO, and another thing I want to point out is there is a firmware download, maybe with the new RIGOs they'll come with it, but this is the improved uh, version of their FFT. So it's a 10 megahertz clock coming in, and they're showing the harmonics off the 10 meg. Okay, what I've done here is I've got the 10 meg from my, from my oscillator up here. It's not as good as this oscillator they have here, where it's nice clean waveforms. So I've got some more harmonics. But the big peaks are the odd harmonics. Now, what you can see is how, okay, you see how fat these um, things are? This is 10 meg, 30 meg, 50 meg. It's odd harmonics, and it's, um, showing the energy at each frequency, okay? Now, see these look a little narrower? What I want to show you is this is at 2,000 points, okay? Now, if I go up to 1,000 points, if I go up, see how they're wide like that? 
So it looks a little bit wider, it looks a little bit more like that. And that's a thousand points. If I toggle down, I can get 2,000 points. See how they get narrower and the noise floor lowers and there's a little more noise across here? There's more information on the valleys. Now if I go 4,000, you see how it's dropping? And these peaks are getting skinnier. It's getting more refinement, getting better resolution. Now there's 8,000 points, okay? Now here's 16,000, that's the max for this scope. So you see how much more detailed that is than this? So that's what you get with the Siglent. Now the thing is, is the one I'm gonna show in this uh, paper today, it actually goes up to one meg points. So it's actually 10 times, almost, it's you know, uh, five times better than this, let's say. Now if you look up here, it's kind of hard to see, maybe I'll zoom in, but the peaks are so fine that it's hard to see. That's because this uh, GWS deck has one million points. So does the one, the 50 meg version that I'm gonna show you on the paper, okay? So that's what one million points looks like. And also this noise floor is really low. It's down around 80 dB. This is about 55 dB or 60 dB. That's about 60, 60 dB. So if you watch a video on, on Rigo's website, they show how this was improved by this update before it was even less refined at the bottom. But you can see how it doesn't even really compare to these others. I'm gonna zoom into this so you can see a better picture of that. Okay, so I hope you can see how fine these are. Uh, this is 10 megahertz right here, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So it's 10 megahertz per division, and 50 megahertz is here in the center. So it says 50 and 10 megahertz per division. Now, watch, I can get rid of the menus. So, there you go. Okay, guys, so here is just uh, basically the score sheet. We've got the four best scopes, and I've kind of labeled them here, number one, two, three, and four. I'll explain that in a moment here. Uh, the GWN stack, they're all one gig of sound per second, and they all have deep memory, okay? Now, as far as the gig of samples per second, the only thing that's different is in the GWN stack, they don't divide it between channels. You get the one gig of uh, samples for every channel. So maybe a little more sampling on the gig on the GW. Okay, the other thing is this is a 50 meg, 60, 100, and I forgot to write it down. This is also a 50 meg. Okay, the, uh, the deep memory, the GW is, again, a little different than the other ones. It's 10 million points per channel for each channel. The other one's divided up. If you're using both channels uh, in a bank, it divides it. So um, deep memory in the 01 is 40 mega points. So that sounds like a lot, but it really gets divided up. I think that gets divided up in all four, but I'm not positive. It might get divided up into two and then and then another 40 meg for the other two like these two so in the signal you get 14 meg for two channels one and two and 14 meg for channels three and four same as Rigo except for look Rigo you get 24 mega points now the one thing I want to mention on Rigo is that was an upgrade they're giving that away now okay capture rate 50,000 frames on the GW uh, 45 on 01 a hundred on Siglent, so it got an asterisk there, um, and then 30 on the Rigol. Okay, the screens are all seven inch except for the O1, and it has a touch screen, so I got a star for that one. And then on the GW, I gave it a star because it kind of uh, saves the screen, so it kind of competes with O1 as far as usable space because you can turn the menus off. And um, it also has separate controls. I think that's, for me, I like that a lot. Anyway, so there you go. There's four scopes under 500 bucks. Now let's list the prices. Okay, and here's the prices. So the lowest price is the Rigo, 375. 01 is close, 399. And a few, five bucks more, 
GW Instec. And then the highest priced one is Siglent, but it is 100 meg. So I guess they felt like they needed to charge them more. Although I, I, I don't think this bandwidth is a really deciding factor. Um, I think it's definitely a factor. So let's look at the scorecard. What I did is I tried to take in the different factors and score them in a way. So, uh, and what I did is I did it this way, okay? So deep memory, FFT, this is the samples, and this is the capture rate, screen size, bandwidth, the menu, the fact that GW Instec and O1, you can turn off menus. Um, the separate controls, I think that's a big one. And so I came up, I came up with the score. But then I kind of forgot to put the price in there. So I put the price and I scored them that way. And the way I did the scores, guys, um, the highest number was the best score. So I gave a four for, say, the lowest price for Rigo. And then three, and then two, and then one. Okay, that's how I scored them. So I tried to, tried to do it in a logical way and the scores came out this way and then I added prices and things got a lot closer when I added the price. Look, Rigo jumped way up in the score and so they're almost a tie for these three. GW Instec is still higher. And you can see how I scored that. Now, here's the thing is in the in the case for like say separate controls Instead. there's the only one that did it so they only got one point extra now since the other ones didn't have it I could have gave them a zero which would have really dropped those uh, but I, I gave them a three so it just gave them one point higher and the menu turn off I think that's big but I, they only got one point higher uh, GW and O1 for having that feature Maybe I should have separated by two points, and maybe this by two points. So, and then also samples per second. Uh, GW wins there, they have twice as many. So, maybe I should have gave two points where it was a case like that to separate them. And in that case, um, O1 would have got one more point, and GW Instec would have had four more points. So. I think GW Instec is the clear winner in my mind. Okay, now if you take in longevity, how long the company's been around, that kind of thing, again, GW wins out there. So there you go, guys. Hey guys, if this was helpful, give me a thumbs up if you like this, okay? It's just down there, thumbs up. <laughs> that helps me. All right, hey, thanks guys, appreciate it. See you next time. By the way, I'm gonna review this today. Hopefully I'll post this very soon, maybe tomorrow, okay? Yeah, we'll do that.